All right, hi, Ram fans, and welcome to another edition of Rams All Access with your radio crew as we come to you from Boise, Idaho, on the eve of the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Brian Roth, Mark Driscoll with you. Happy to have you. Hey, Mark, you know, this is a fourth consecutive year for the Rams to be bowling. The weather isn't exactly ideal up here, but the fact of the matter is going to bowl games is a big deal. And you know, we talk about extra practice. I mean, that's a big deal, too, isn't it? It really is. Rams have a very young team that has developed over the year playing extremely well right now Brian the the value of an extra 15 practices Rams might not get he might get 12 or 13 I think you said maybe we'll get in but the value of those practices cannot be measured both from building confidence building technique building for next year uh, hopefully then finishing the season with lots of momentum it's a really important time for the team to be together and build more teamwork but to also improve with practice. Yeah, the team's been out here since Sunday. This is practice number four of four here in Boise with the game, of course, coming up tomorrow night. And boy, it's, it's always fun to come out to bowl games. They've done a bunch of cool stuff. And a lot of that stuff you can see right here on Ram Vision. So uh, check it out. You can peruse around. They were up sledding uh, yesterday. They were at local hospitals here today. Of course, all the bowl events as well. Well, Idaho, the Vandals are going to be the opponent coming up tomorrow. And yeah. listen, there's a lot of similarities between these two teams. And, and really the number one similarity is how these two teams have closed out the regular season. They're both red hot. Red hot teams. Idaho's won six out of seven. Rams are absolutely on fire. The best team in the Mountain West Conference. No question about that right now, Brian. Teams are similar with offenses. Run, run the spread. Uh, zone read, very similar offenses, three wide outs a lot. Uh, but Idaho spreads, spreads it around in the passing game a lot better. Uh, of course, as you know, the Rams focus very much on Michael Gallup, the all-conference, uh, all-Mountain West Conference receiver. Uh, defenses are exactly the same. Uh, the two defensive coordinators coached together for almost 10 years. Right. They, see, they see the world the same way. Uh, they run very similar. Uh, CSU's a little more aggressive on defense than Idaho. Idaho sits back in zone a little more, moves around a little bit, but not as aggressive. Uh, so team, two teams that are hot, that are winning and that play very similar styles. You know, you've watched a lot of film on Idaho, and we, we know how powerful this Ram offense has been towards the end of the year. They, they've been a juggernaut. Of course, put up 63 against San Diego State a few weeks ago in the regular season finale. This is a Vandal defense, so that gives up some yardage through the air. They're giving up nearly 270 yards through the air, 112th in the nation. Will the Rams be able to dissect that secondary and have a big game through the air? We know the Rams are going to be balanced because they always are, but can the Rams have a big game? Rams are perfectly balanced, almost exactly the same average passing and running the football all year, so the perfect balance that Coach Bobo wants. Uh, the, the Vandals play uh, field corners and boundary corners, and why do I bring that up? Because the boundary corner is going to be lined up with Michael Gallup, right. and the Vandals have to take a look at how are we going to slow down that Nick Stevens to Michael Gallup combination. Michael Gallup has got to be as hot a receiver as there is anywhere in the country. He's been unstoppable. Even when teams have rolled to him, have bracketed him, San Diego State tried that, New Mexico tried that, didn't do him any good at all. But uh, it'll be important for the tight ends, uh, Nolan Peralta, for example, to have a big game, uh, for B.C. Johnson, for Robert Ruiz on the backside, away from Michael, if they really start rolling those coverages to him, the Rams have to be able to adjust. Nick Stevens has shown his ability to do that, get the ball, mix it up, and throw it to other receivers. But Michael Gallup's the key guy. And, of course, in the running game for Colorado State, there's no Marvin Kinsey tore his ACL in just the second bowl practice. Yeah. Really heartbreaking to yeah, see. The is. true freshman out of Atlanta has been so good this year. Had surgery on December the 13th. He's going to be back in a Ram uniform coming up next year ready to go. So CSU will only have Dawkins and Matthews, but I think they'll be just fine with those two there. Yeah. All right, a couple final thoughts. Thoughts before we wrap it up here are the weather out here. It's, uh, it's been a little cold. Of course, yeah. you see the Rams behind us practicing indoors. They've gone indoors all week here, but the temperature at kickoff is supposed to be right around 20 degrees. At this point, it looks like it's going to be fairly dry, but you know, we walked across the field. We talked to some of the players. They've walked across the blue turf, and it is cold, and it is hard. It's the blue rock. You know, the Smurf, <laughs> the Smurf field. The Smurf, the, Smurf, the Smurf rock is hard. The field is at its, it's kind of, it looks like it's at its end of its useful life. I think it'll be interesting to talk to the Boise people, see if they're going to replace it soon. 
And if they'll replace it with blue, I wonder. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it, the field conditions. I think they will replace uh, it with blue. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, the field conditions are not ideal. Now, there's, it's a sunny day, even though it's cold, it's sunny, so maybe it'll soften it up, melt it a little bit. But uh, I, hopefully the weather will be good. It'll be, a, it'll be the kind of conditions where both teams can show what they can do. And if I'm the University of Idaho, one thing you got to try to figure out, how in the world do you stop this Ram offense? Yep, that's going to be one of the big keys for the Vandals, no question about that. That final thought. Listen, this is a big game for each of these two programs. Obviously, the Vandals, they're dropping down to FCS in two years, 2018. They're going to the big sky. Meanwhile, for Colorado State, many folks have asked, well, will the Rams be motivated? I, I don't think there's any question they will be. Listen, Absolutely. you're opening up a new on-campus stadium next year. You have a chance to get to eight wins, a chance to close out the season strong. Finish the year has kind of been the motto for this football team. Will the Rams be motivated tomorrow night? Oh, my goodness. I, I have to believe they will be. They have so much to play for. You and I have seen every game, every week, get better. A couple dips in the middle, but every week get better and better to now being one of the best football teams in the country, really, especially on the offensive side of the ball, playing hard, making plays. Uh, to win this game, eight wins yep. really sounds great, Ryan. I mean, you've won eight games. You've had a great season. So I believe the Rams will be motivated. They'll be playing hard. If they play at the same level they played the last month of, uh, in November, they're going to be fine in this game against the Idaho Vandals. Yeah, and they're going to have a lot of guys coming back with some great experience into next season. It certainly would love to close out this year with a victory over the Vandals. All right, the game is almost just 24 hours away. It comes up tomorrow night right here from Boise, Idaho, and Albertson Stadium. We'll go on the air with our radio broadcast at 3 p.m., but the kickoff here from Boise, 5 p.m. between the Rams and the Vandals. For my broadcast partner, Mark Triscoll, I'm Brian Roth saying so long. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks for joining us here on Ram Vision.